Hello everyone, I am Ms. Nelly. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about the teaching job market in Canada in 2023. Actually, for the past two years, I have been doing some of the videos in Cantonese that talks about the teaching job market. But this is my first time in talking about the teaching job market in English um, in 2023. So let's get started. So first of all, before I actually talk about like the job market, I would like to give a little bit of background of myself. So I'm Ms. Nelly. I'm actually onto a college of teachers, which means that I'm certified to teach in Ontario. I also have 12 years of teaching experience. I've taught in public school, private school, and independent schools. I have, uh, I actually graduated from the University of Toronto. I got an HBSC, which is a science degree, and also I went to grad school for the Bachelor of Education. After that, um, I just went into teaching. So currently, I'm a science teacher. I'm also a department head. Uh, I work in a different department. I'm not a science department head, but I still teach science. I work more into like a support role, like a student support role. I can't really exactly say what it is, but like it is a student support role of department head. Okay, so I got a lot of questions from like people that uh, watch my video. They usually ask me, can teachers with foreign experience teach in Canada? The answer is actually yes. Like you can always uh, teach in Canada with foreign experience, doesn't matter where you're from. However, you do have to be certified in Canada in order for you to actually teach in Canada. Now, uh, I know that this video is in Chinese. I probably may make another one that is in English to talk about how to actually get certified in Canada. You don't really need to study your Bachelor of Education like what I did in Canada. You can actually do it in other places in the world. However, there is a list of criteria that you have to meet. And then once you meet all the criteria, you will be able to certify as a teacher in Canada. Uh, one thing that is different from this video that I made two years ago is that Back then, uh, there is a mathematics requirement, but now we don't. However, once I make uh, a new update of the video in English, I probably will take away the mathematics requirement anyways. So if you manage to understand Cantonese and watch this video, um, then there's no more mathematics requirement. Now, there are multiple types of teachers in Canada. Um, there, are, there are many division. Um, there are many ways of dividing the teachers in Canada. However, we do have different types. So first of all, we do have occasional teachers. So occasional te teachers are teachers that like basically is supply teachers. They only work like day to day. They work one day here, one day there. Maximum maybe two to three days or maybe a week. Uh, depending on your school board, the maximum could be like 10 days. And that's pretty much it. You get paid by day and um, you don't get as much stability, but um, you basically get call whenever somebody is sick. Now, there's also another type of teachers called the LTOs. So there are long-term occasional teachers. They are the people that uh, work more than an X amount of days. So usually the cutoff is 10, then it, uh, you will change from occasional teacher to uh, long-term occasional teachers. So basically these are the people who are occasional teachers, but they would have a long-term job. So for example, like let's say somebody is going on mat leave, that would be like a one-year type of supply job, or like some people who are sick, like for example, uh, people who have uh, medical issues Issues that may be taking a longer term, longer like sick leaves, then uh, we would need to hire teachers to come and teach their class. The difference between occasional teacher and LTO is that occasional teacher, you don't really need to prep the lesson. You just really need to go there and make sure that everybody is safe and make sure that the lesson plan is being executed. You don't really need to mark. You don't really need to plan. Um, you don't really need to stay after school either. So, uh, however, for LTOs, because now that you are covering for a longer time period of time and then you also need to prep you also need to teach you also need to mark you also need to prep for report cards and things like that so you're basically working as a teacher in the school but you just don't have kind of like a permanent job in that school now the last one is called contract teachers or permanent teachers those are the regular staff in that particular school or the particular school board those teachers are paid by year so they well like we don't get our salary by year but like our salary point is based on annual salary so they're not by days anymore like long-term occasional teachers are also paid by year but the thing is for uh, contract and permanent teachers they get their contract renew pretty much every two years so in this case like they will also be the regular staff in that particular school 
Now, a lot of people would ask like how to become like occasional teacher or like how to become LTOs or how to become con contract teachers or permanent teachers. Now, when I list it this way, like the occasional teachers like OT and LTO and then contract teachers, they're pretty much like stages. So you have to pretty much go through the OT stage and then LTO and then contract. I was a really lucky person that I went through all these three stages in two and a half year. Uh, a lot of people who graduated from teacher's college at me, like pretty much at the same time as me, um, they took a little bit longer time. Or like people who uh, got the job the same time as me, I got it within two and a half year. But like people who are like getting the job at the same time as me, they took probably seven or eight years in order for them to actually get to that point. So um, from that occasional, like from that OT, LTO and contract, teacher stages it really depends on the people uh, like the teacher and also what your teacher roles are um, to basically to be fast or slow however LTO does have uh, the same salary as contract so once you get to the LTO stage like you can still pretty much meet the end needs OT is a little bit harder I do know OTs that can meet end needs but like LTOs and contract they pretty much get paid the same way now you do need to get through the whole three stages except there are some people who have like really really extremely rare teachables then uh, they may be able to skip through the stages and like for example directly going to LTO or directly going to contract but that's really rare like I was really lucky because I have chemistry and physics so uh, I like pretty much and, and at that time physics was in demand so I was really lucky to actually uh, only work for two weeks for occasional teacher and then I start LTO pretty much right away however uh, I have friends who have other teachable they're not as lucky so they took a little bit longer time in the OT stage and then uh, eventually they still become contract teacher it's just a longer time now uh, you will see that I put like some thumbs up and thumbs down over here and the reason why I put thumbs up and thumbs down we're pretty much talking about the teacher shortage in Canada there's a lot of news that talks about like teacher shortage in Canada well, the thing is that there is actually a shortage in Canada in 2023, at least at this moment. However, uh, the shortage is actually not in the contract teachers. So we do have like, I wouldn't say like we don't hire contract teachers, but we do have a saturation in contract teachers currently. So like people who are retiring and people who are entering the career like is very much saturated however we do have a teacher shortage in our ot's and lto's uh there are many times that we have to cancel classes because of like not having enough ot's or like uh, sometimes when a teacher gets sick and um, they need a longer term of coverage we were having a very hard time in getting an ltos to go to any of the school and that happens a lot especially in like bigger cities uh, because the population is higher so um, a lot of the school boards in at least the gta were uh, basically fighting for occasional teacher especially for specific teachables if, it, if we're talking about ltos now like what I said, we see a lot of like news that talks about teacher shortages um, and then you can like read it. This is from like CTV news from Ottawa and then you can see that like there's CBC news in BC. Like what I said, we definitely have a teacher shortage and there are school boards that actually look at teachers who are not having uh, certification yet, but they're usually hiring like people who are like in teacher's college and then having like going to have their certification soon or like people who have applied and they're just waiting for the final confirmation and then they would probably hire them for occasional teachers but it's very very extremely rare unless it is very rare like um teachables otherwise like i don't usually see people who doesn't have the certification and then going into lto or contract teachers but like definitely have seen occasional teachers who are probably just like teachers college like candidates and then they're waiting to graduate and things like that now, like what I said, uh, the thumbs up and thumbs down are pretty much talking about the demand and the shortages uh, in terms of teachers in 2023. Uh, however, uh, long-term occasional teachers and contract teachers, like what I said, they're pretty much pay the same. Uh, please don't look down on yourself and please don't look down on OT and LTOs. Uh, we really appreciate them because they really cover our like leaves. However, uh, for LTO and contract teachers, a lot of people 
would really use contract teacher as a goal. But I also know a lot of my friends, they use LTO as a goal. Like I do have friends that do not want to become contract teachers and they just stay as an LTO. And the reason why for that is because LTO, like you don't really get stuck into a school. Like you can transfer to any places wherever you want. The only downside of that is you don't get guaranteed a job all the time. So you're always like constantly being in interviews. So you may get like a one semester um, like LTO in school A and then you'll get another semester LTO in school B. So uh, once you get to like your third year or your fourth year LTO, you don't really need to worry about not having an LTO, like waiting for you, an uh, LTO job waiting for you. But the thing is, like, it's just very annoying in terms of interviews. Uh, but some of my friends do like that because they don't want to be like sticking in like one school. But for me, like, I just hate interviews. So I am a contract teacher currently, and then uh, I just don't need to go to interviews all the time. So that is something that people would need to consider when they're thinking about what type of teachers they would like to become. Now, I'm going to use Ontario as an example from now. However, a lot of the things that I said is similar in other provinces, uh, but because I'm an Ontario teacher, so I'm going to use Ontario as an example. Now, first of all, uh, when we, when somebody, <coughs> excuse me, when somebody become a teacher, uh, they would have to choose a division. So whether, for example, like I graduate from teacher's college from U of T and then I have to choose a division. And also like people who are coming from like other foreign country and then they are getting their certification here, they will also need to choose a division. What do I mean by division? In Ontario, uh, we have four divisions. So we have primary, junior, intermediate, and senior. Those are based on the grade level. So primary means kindergarten to grade three, junior means four to six, uh, intermediate means seven to se uh, 10, and seniors is 11 to 12. One thing that you may want to note is that in Ontario, actually in a lot of uh, provinces too, kindergarten is actually included in the primary. So kindergarten is not really like a separate school, like it is uh, included in elementary school. There are also some school that only offers kindergarten, but it's pretty rare now. Majority of the kindergarten would, uh, sorry, majority of the elementary school would have kindergarten as well. So in order for you to become a kindergarten teacher, that means you have to be an elementary school teacher. Now, if you take a look at the structure in Ontario, which is very interesting because like our school system in Ontario, our elementary school is K to five, which is like um, right there in the yellow box. And then our middle school is grade six to grade eight, which is only three grades. And then our high school is grade nine to grade 12. However, if you look at the teacher division, that doesn't work exactly the same. So if you're looking at the teacher division for primary, it is K to three. And then uh, in order for you to teach grade four and five, then you need juniors and so on. So now if you, you can see that it is not matching. So whenever you think about that, whether you want to be an elementary school teacher or like high school teacher or whatever, you will pretty much have to be in two division. And actually majority of the teachers who graduated from teachers college in Canada, we would be certified for two divisions. So when I graduated from U of T, uh, I was certified for intermediate and senior. Because the reason why for that is, for example, let's say if I'm only certified for senior, what happened is that most likely the school board is not going to hire me for high school because I cannot teach any grade 9, 10, grade 9, 10 classes. I can only teach grade 11 and 12. And I would say that in a school, um, a lot of the times for beginning teachers, they would teach like grade 9, 10 first before teaching grade 11 and 12. So therefore, um, they would rather uh, interview somebody who has intermediate and senior instead of like just somebody who is senior. And that goes the same thing with like middle school. Like um, if you want to teach middle, if you want to teach middle school, you may want to have like junior and intermediate. And if you want to teach like elementary school, you may have to choose like primary and junior. Now, for example, now I actually do have a junior teaching, uh, like junior qualification because uh, I was doing it for my uh, preschool qualification. But let's say if I'm going to apply to an elementary school right now, I highly doubt that uh, the school board or any prime, like any elementary principal would hire me because I don't have primary. Like who would hire somebody unless they're really, really desperate, but like how, who will hire somebody who can only teach grade four or five without teaching like K to three, right? So in this case, I think that they would more likely to choose somebody who can teach more grades instead of like teaching a specifically two grades in a particular school. Now, I have mentioned teacher teachable subjects and I did not talk about what that is. So teachable subjects, oh, why? Oh, so 
I, I just realized what I did. Okay, so teachable subjects are basically what you can teach as a subject. I know, like it's pretty much self-explanatory. But based on teachable subjects, um, you will be able to teach whether elementary school or middle school. Now, the requirement is that if you are teaching either elementary school or middle school, you would at least need to have one teachable subject. If you want to teach high school, you would at least need to have two teachable subjects. What does it mean by teachable subject? Let me give you some example. So these are some basic qualification, which is kind of like our more academic like subject areas for for example like english math french science social science and so on these are basic qualification it's kind of like you going into a classroom and you teach a certain academic course um well when i say academic it's not like oh it has to be like super studious or something like that however we're talking about classroom subject so when you want to teach a high school you will need to have two of these qualification or if you are teaching elementary school you will have to have one of these qualification now, let's say you really don't have enough of these qualification. You can also do additional qualification as well. So additional qualification is kind of like more a support role or like non-traditional classroom teaching. So for example, like English as a language learner, so like library, guidance, special education, co-op education. There's so many different ones that you can choose as well. However, in order for you to be become like to get these additional qualification, you need to get your certification first. That like you cannot just say, oh, I have to... Um, go, I, I want to become a special education teacher and that's pretty much it, right? Like you have to have some basic qualification first. So for example, like I do have uh, guidance and in order for me to do guidance, uh, I need to have some teaching, quali uh, teaching qualification. So when I graduated, I actually have chemistry and physics as my basic qualification as my two teachable subjects. And then after that, I can take courses to add more additional qualification into pretty much my pocket. And um, to get these additional qualification, it's actually not that hard. Like you just need to study. Like there are courses online that you can study, you can do in person as well. Uh, I've never done any of them in person. I did everything online for my additional qualification, but I do have friends that um, enjoy more in the in-person environment more than the on online environment. But like what I said, you need two of these if you want to go to high school. I mean, if you want to teach high school, uh, if you want to teach elementary school, then you need one of these. And how does that get determined is that your qualification, your basic qualification, you can't just say, oh, like, I know English, I'm going to teach English. You can't do that. Like, it's based on your post-secondary education. So, for example, your undergrad and your uh, grad school. So, for example, like, I graduated from U of T with a Bachelor of Science, and I did a lot of chemistry courses, and I did a lot of physics courses. So, when I want to declare my teachable, I don't really have a choice. Like, I can really only choose chemistry and physics because... That is what I study when I was in university. I can't say, you know what, I know a lot about business, just let me teach business. I can't do that because I did not take enough business courses when I was in university. Uh, I end up uh, being able to teach math too because a lot of my courses have like math content and I also took a lot of math courses on top of my chemistry and physics. So I added the math afterwards. However, uh, when I first graduated, I had chemistry and physics. Now, if it is additional qualification, you need to have your basic qualification first. So you can be like me who have chemistry or physics or like some of my friends who have French and English. And then after that, you just need to take courses to get the additional qualification. Now, a lot of you may be asking who have asked like foreign trained teachers, they will ask like, would it be harder for foreign trained teachers to find a job? Uh, the answer is a yes and no. The reason why for that is not because like, oh, because you're foreignly trained, that's why we don't want to give you a job or something like that. That's not what it is. It's just that when there is a foreign trained teacher, when they come to Canada, the first thing that they would encounter as an obstacle is that um, they are going to assume that everything is the same. So I'm not saying that um, this is a bad thing, but what happened is that uh, a lot of like education system all around the world is designed for the demographics for that particular region. So for example, let's say if there's a teacher coming from Japan and um, the teacher would like to become a teacher in Canada, then the Japanese culture and then how they work in the Japanese education system is designed for Japan is not really designed for Canada. So in this case, what happened is if that Japanese teacher took that philosophy and apply in Canada, most likely it's not going to work. It's not saying that like that system is bad or that system is good. It's just that you cannot apply things that are different into like a different places, right? So vice versa, if I 
go back like if I go to Japan and teach, and that goes the same thing. Like whatever that works in Canada may not work in Japan. So therefore, they will have some obstacle in looking for a job, especially during the interview, because they assume that everything is the same. So if you don't assume that everything is the same and willing to kind of like. Think like willing to learn about what the difference is.、Uh, it's not going to be that bad. Now,、um, a lot of the things in Canada also is that Canada value what you can do as an educator more than a teacher. A lot of the foreign tra- foreign trained teachers,、uh, they come in, they were like, oh, you know, I'm really good at teaching chemistry, or I'm very good at teaching physics. That's awesome. Like that's a great thing to have. But at the same time, in Canada, we really care about like. Apart from okay, you can teach chemistry or you can t- teach physics, but apart from being a teacher, what else can you offer as like an educator? Like, how are you working with students in marginalized com- marginalized community? How can you ensure student success and things like that? So those are the things that I wouldn't say that oh, because that you are a foreign teacher or because somebody is a foreign teacher, it's very hard for them to get a job. It's more like did you think about all of these before you go to a job interview? Now, some people may ask, like, what if I'm not good at English? So, if you're not good at English, for example, my English is not perfect either. Like, I had, I have grammar mistakes sometimes, and sometimes I may have spelling errors as well. So, it is a yes and no too. So, if you are not very good at English, um. The problem would be that do you have a basic level of English? So if you have a basic level of English, for example, you can carry a conversation and you're able to write and teach,、um, then that should be okay in order for you to become a teacher in Canada. Obviously, if you want to become a teacher in Canada, you have to have the same literacy、uh, level for、uh, French as well. No. Um, you also need to your English level needs to be good enough to understand policies and professional documents. So if let's say your English is not there yet, then it would be better for you to kind of like improve your English first before you、uh, become a teacher. I'm not saying that okay, like you have to be like perfect in English. The reason why for that is like as a teacher who is practicing right now,、um, there are so many policies and professional documents that I have to read, and sometimes like I have a hard time understanding certain things too. So if I don't understand That it's very hard for me to actually work it. So therefore, in order for you to do your job, then at least like have the level of understanding professional documents. But once you get to that level, you don't need to be like, oh, I have to be a hundred percent in English, or like I have to be perfect in English. You don't really need to be. But like these are like kind of like the two basic levels on what is the requirement in order for you to uh, work uh, efficiently as a teacher in Canada. Now, a couple of tips on how to get a job in Canada for、uh, as a teacher. The first thing is volunteer.、Uh, I highly recommend. I actually have a student teacher, and I also work with like I mentor teachers in teachers college too. I always encourage them to volunteer,、uh, whether it is like people who are local or people who are foreign foreign trained teachers. Uh, volunteer makes you see a lot of different things in the school system because as a student, like even I graduated from high school in Canada, but as a student, you only see the student perspective. Like you never see the teacher perspective. Yes, teachers college may have like、um, like practicum that you can like go in and teach, but at the same time, like you only follow your associate teacher.、Uh, you don't get to see a lot of other things, and you don't get to kind of be a little bit more independent. But when you are a volunteer, you get to see more aspects of the school and. And also, you're collecting experience, and those experiences are very valuable because those experiences is something that you can talk about in job interviews or like、uh, put it in your portfolio and things like that. So it's a good way to kind of like get to know like the culture of a school and also like、uh, gaining experience. Uh, secondly, is don't rush the process. A lot of teachers may just like, okay, I'm gonna grab a job. I don't really care、uh, what that job is,、uh, or like I don't really care about if it is a private school or like, or if it is an independent school or something like that. The only thing that is, if you rush the process, what happen is you are. Like basically, sometimes you are basically stuck in a certain place. So, for example, like when I first graduated,、um, I went into a private school, but I didn't want to go to private school、uh, to teach. And then, when I say private school, it's different from independent school. But I didn't want to teach in private school. I want to teach in independent school or public school. And then, when I got a job in public school, all my experience in private school were not very useful anymore because what happened is that the experience that I acquire in Private school are very different demographic in comparison to public school. So in this case, like when I go to public school, it feels like everything is back to square one. So therefore,、uh, if you know what your goal is, it's better to work on the goal instead of like rushing through the process. 
Now, set a third is be ready to adapt to a different environment, and that doesn't only apply to foreign teachers, but that also applies to、uh, local students or like local teachers as well. Because、uh, demographic change all the time, and especially like the school that I work at is in GTA, and it changes all the time too. So,、uh, if you're really stuck in a certain environment or like a certain way of teaching. Uh, it's going to be a difficult time because, like, environment always change, demographic always change. So whether you are coming from sort of like a local university or like whether you're foreign trained teacher, foreignly trained teacher,、uh, it is better for you to be ready to adapt to a different environment. For the first probably four or five years of my teaching, I have been to so many different schools, I've moved in so many different places, and all the demographics are very different. So I have to adapt to every school that I go to. Now, orient yourself to focus on people more than the content.、Uh, I always tell myself that I'm not teaching science; I'm teaching students. So, if students are not learning, there's no point of teaching the science. So, content can always be delivered. I get it, but at the same time, it is important to focus on the student itself.、Uh, we're very student-oriented in Canada.、Uh, we really focus on student success. So,、um, to kind of like. Adapt yourself into this environment.、Uh, try to orient yourself in terms of like thinking. Focus more on how can I support a student more than how can I teach a certain content. Now the next thing is it's okay to take courses. So this is、uh, very important because sometimes like students are very upset or like foreignly trained teachers are very upset if.、Um, Um, let's say OCT or like some of the、um, like governing body, they're like, oh, you have to take certain course in order for me to actually give you a certification.、Uh, it's actually okay to take courses. I spent like my first three years of teaching to、uh, take courses and acquire more qualifications.、Um, it happens all the time. It's very very common. So don't get upset if you have to take courses,、um, and it actually、uh, broaden your horizon.、Uh, next is network. Uh, even though, as much as I don't like it,、uh, networking is very important,、um, especially in the OT stage. Because what happened is that OT goes to different schools, so the more that people remember you, the more that you will get jobs. So networking is very important.、Uh, obviously, right now we have、uh, a shortage of OT, so networking for OT is probably not as important. But、um, if you want to just like go to a certain school or like you get called for a certain. School board. It is always good to kind of make sure that people know you,、uh, and then in this case, then they will call you up. And that goes back to the first point that I was talking about: is volunteer. So if you did not get a job yet, volunteer really show your faces, and it will be good for networking. And that's pretty much it.、Uh, thank you for like watching this video for almost half an hour.、Uh, please help with like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you have any question, feel free to leave it in the comments.、Uh, I try my best to talk about it.、Uh, if you have other concerns,、uh, just let me know. But、um, I try to answer as much as possible. Thank you. Goodbye.